Spectacle had always been part of Edmund Campion's life. While he was still a young academic in this university, Campion had been chosen to lead a series of public debates in front of the Queen when she visited the university in 1568. But after he left Oxford in 1569 to be reconciled to the church and to be ordained a Catholic priest, he used these skills in the defense of the Catholic faith. He penned challenges and reposts to the emerging Anglican establishment, which he had been a member of. Just before his arrest, he had written his Ten Reasons, which was printed not far from here at Stoner, and copies were left on the pews of the University Church of St. Mary on the morning of Insignia in 1581, one of the university's most important ceremonial occasions. He was arrested a short while after this, and because he was something of a celebrity, before the trial itself, Campion was forced to enter into public debates with Anglican clergy on disputed questions. And the attempt really was to make a fool of this accomplished orator. The judicial trial which followed was marked by a series of attempts to ridicule either Campion himself or the Catholic faith which he loved and professed. On the morning of the 1st of December, 1581, Campion met his fellow Jesuit, Alexander Bryant, and Rafe Sherwin, the proto-martyr of the English College, who were to be his companion martyrs. Taken out of the tower, these men were attached to hurdles and dragged through the streets of London, through the markets, past Newgate, along Hoban to Tyburn. One of the Anglican clergy who had been sent to dispute with Campion still tried to thrash out the last argument of their uh, their questions on justification. And it seems that Campion didn't take very much notice of him. Arriving at Tyburn, Campion had a speech ready and began with the words from today's first reading. We have been made, we have put, been put on show in front of the whole universe, angels as well as men. But Campion and his companions were constantly heckled by the crowd and so were left to make a more eloquent speech in their own martyrdom. Once the executioners had done their work, the crowd were entertained by a small array of circus performers before dispersing, and the spectacle was over. Most went back to their everyday affairs. Most, but not all. Standing in the crowd was the young Henry Walpole, born in Norfolk in the dying days of Mary's reign. Henry was raised as a Catholic, and after graduating from Cambridge while studying law in London, he was of some interest to the authorities in their attempts to track down Catholics. But standing close to the scaffold, he was splattered with Campion's blood. His faith was in awakened. He left London for home in Norfolk and then fled to the continent to study for the priesthood. He entered the Society of Jesus, was ordained a priest, and he would be united with Campion in a martyr's death in 1595, and he was joined on the scaffold by blessed Alexander Rawlins, a graduate of this university. Shortly before leaving for the continent, Walpole wrote a poem dedicated to Campion, Why Do I Use My Paper, Ink, and Pen? The less inflammatory verses were set to music by William Byrd, but one of the verses which wasn't set to music reads this way. You thought perhaps when learned Campion dies, his pen must cease his sugared tongue be still, but you forget how loud his death it cries, how far beyond the sound of tongue and quill. You did not know how rare and great a good it was to write his precious gifts in blood. Campion is one of the many martyrs of this university. We know for certain of around 65 of them. All of them lived to some extent at least from their eloquence, but for all their gifts and talents, they were never so eloquent as they were in their martyrdom. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard, yet their voice goes out to all the earth, their words to the end of the world. <laughs>